This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is $80 of cookie dough. Did I do this video because I kind of wanted to make cookies? Yes. Yes, I did. And I kind of want to turn this into a series. I think it'd be really fun just to see for different recipes where it makes sense to splurge on ingredients and where you can save or if there's even a difference. And of course we had to start with cookies because um, who better to judge cookies than moi? So give this video a thumbs up if we should turn it into a series. And if you have any series name recommendations, leave them down below because I cannot think of anything. Like all the ones I got are just too cheesy. Spend that dough. <laughs> <laughs> puns. So for this, we have one recipe, two batches, and one is going to be expensive, luxurious ingredients, and the other is going to be the cheaper alternatives. And Chris and I went through and like calculated the amount that each of these batches cost like per batch of 24 cookies. And so the cheaper one ended up being $7.65 total per batch, and the expensive one, drum roll please, <laughs> $83.30. That's right. These are expensive cookies. And we'll get into all the differences with these ingredients and like where they differ. But um, I thought I would say that up front that we have a 30 cent cookie versus a $3.50 ish cookie. So today the cookie recipe I chose is, this is a classic, this is, we're going way back. This is by Tasty and is their best chewy chocolate chip cookie recipe. And I chose this one because I wanted to pick out um, like specific different ingredients. I wanted to try like espresso and see if there was a difference in price there, chocolate chunks versus chocolate chips. And so I wanted a recipe that kind of had all of those elements in them already. So we are gonna start with the cheap, or I shouldn't even be saying cheap, this is just regular cookies. We got good old Francesca here, ready to do battle for us. We need one cup of granulated sugar, one and a half cups of brown sugar, lumpy, and then one cup of unsalted butter. Yeah. Get in there. And then is there anything else? Oh, salt. Because you gotta you gotta add the salt back in. I can't find my teaspoon. Anyway, I have no idea where I went. You know when you can find like every single <laughs> different one? There's a the tablespoon, there's like the one sixteenth teaspoon, but you can't find the one that you're looking for. That's um that's me right now. <gasps> Wait, hold on. Found it. We are adding two teaspoons of salt. Yeah, all right, Rachel. One, two, and then we're gonna just cream this together so it forms like a paste. All right, so we got a nice paste going. So now we are gonna add in the eggs, eggs and vanilla. Now these are just regular eggs and I'm using imitation like artificial vanilla. Not the case for the expensive ones. We're adding two eggs and two teaspoons. And leave your comment down below with if you think that the more expensive one is gonna taste better or you're not gonna notice a difference. I genuinely wanna know. Or the cheaper one's gonna taste better. That could be the case. Now I normally don't use imitation, like artificial vanilla extract in my cookies. So this feels wrong, but we are going for like cheapest version of cookies. I'm spilling it all over the place. Come on vanilla, I'm bursting me in front of my friends. There we go. Unbelievable. So messy. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna beat this together. All right. Now we're gonna go on to the dry ingredients. So thank you, Francesca. Appreciate you. And now into here, we are going to sift in two and a half cups of flour, a teaspoon of baking soda, and then two teaspoons of espresso powder, which I understand is not in the original recipe, but I thought it was. And so I'm just, I'm keeping it in there. It's gonna be good. Now, in all honesty, I don't um, sift my flour for my cookie. Should I? Probably. Also, you guys all saw in the last video, I have a very nice mother-in-law who makes me lots of cookies and she makes them perfectly every time. This reminds me too much of snow and I don't like it. Try not to look at it. <laughs> All right, and now we are going to fold in the flour because you do not want to overmix your cookies. Very important. And then to this, we are going to be adding a mixture of chocolate chunks and chocolate chips because it's cheap, but it's also a little bit fancy. It feels fancy to have both the chunks and the chocolate chips 
in like the fancy recipe, but it didn't feel fair to not include it in the cheaper version, you know? So we just used the cheapest chocolate. Okay, this is mostly together. So now I wanna add in the chocolat. We have the chips and the chocolat, but I do wanna like chop this up. Although that would be really interesting. Just take this. Mm. We wanna have little, little chunks. Chunks of chocolate. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think <laughs> how I wanna do this. I don't normally um, use chocolate chunks in my cookies, although I feel like I should. I want the chunks to be big enough that you can like bite into them, but I also want all those like little bits of, you know, chocolate shavings gonna add like a nice element to the cookies. One that on a regular basis, I'm too lazy to include. All right, feel like that's good. Let's throw this in. Oh no, it's okay, it's okay, I saved it. I got your back, cheap cookies. Now let's very gently mix this all together. And then we're gonna let this rest. We're gonna let both of the cookie recipes rest because I want them to be delicious. And I feel like the best way to a delicious cookie is letting it rest in the fridge for around an hour. I mean, if you can do it overnight, that's gonna be even better, but um, I have an hour. All right, this is looking incredible. I am very excited about these. All right, cookies, off you go to the fridge. Stay delicious. All right, are you guys ready for these cookies? Because like, I cannot believe how expensive they are. I'm very curious about this. And I'm gonna tell you guys with each of the ingredients how much more expensive it is versus the cheaper cookies. Because I find that interesting. Fun fact, it's the only kind of math I will tolerate. Forgot to wash this. <laughs> My bad. Okay, fancy cookie time. So we are gonna start with the normal, <laughs> one of the few normal ingredients here. The normal one cup of white sugar and one and a half cups of brown sugar. Again, these ones are no different than the, um, the cheaper cookies. Now we're gonna get into the good stuff. We're gonna start by instead of kosher salt, which I do recommend for baking recipes, uh, we're gonna use my fancy Malden salt. This is like a flaky salt. It's not a huge difference like in terms of how much it adds to the recipe itself because again, it's such a small amount, but I felt like it just, it needed to happen because of their fancy cookies. Fancy cookies would appreciate a Malden salt. I mean, Malden's the brand name, but it's like, it's flaky salt. <laughs> so we need two teaspoons of that. We're gonna do a little bit, little bit extra just because they are like pretty big chunks. All right, that looks good. Now on to the cup of unsalted butter. Now you may be wondering if you are very familiar with the tasty recipe, why I didn't melt the butter because that is one of the parts of the recipe is to melt the butter. But because I'm using a butter that I have never done before and because I normally don't melt my butter, I felt like we could just do it with just like room temperature butter. And the butter that I am using today, this is the most expensive butter that I could find, which is by the way, five times the price of the normal butter. And it is unsalted water buffalo butter, grass fed from a small family farm. And I also chose buffalo butter because apparently it doesn't taste any different than, than regular butter, so I felt like it would be a good option to include in a cookie recipe. Like it's not gonna have like a weird like aftertaste or something. And oh, it's very white. Does it smell like anything? It does. I don't know about this. It smells fresh is the best way I could describe it. But this is what it looks like, and it, it kind of looks like shortening, to be honest. But that is the most expensive butter that I could find, and so that is what we're using. In you go. I need to scrape it off of here. This is like $2 worth of butter right here. Not wasting any of this. There you go. Okay, now we're gonna very carefully cream this together because that brick is all I have. I'm so scared I'm gonna overmix this. <laughs> all right, fancy butter is in. It is mixed, so we're gonna add in two organic eggs. Very fancy. One, two. And now, ladies and gentlemen, an item that is 50 times the price of the cheap variety. 50 times, everyone. That is, you guessed it, actual vanilla bean. We are going to be scraping this to 
go in here. I need a cutting board for this. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> so expensive. I need about two thirds of a vanilla bean pod essentially to be equivalent to what we used in the other recipe. It smells exquisite. Wow. Open it up. I've never done this before, so this is very exciting. Oh my gosh, I see this all the time in food shows. Look at that. Wow. Feels so chefy. Like I'm not the most efficient at this, but like, you know, this is my first time. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. In you go. Not wasting any of you. This is like the truffle of the baking world. I feel like it is. Okay, now we mix again. Wow. I don't know, this like looks so like luscious. I don't know how to explain it. All right, now we need to sift. Same as before, but this time we have unbleached organic flour. Regular baking soda, and then I used like a more expensive espresso powder, but actually ended up with like the math. It really wasn't that different in price. Fun little fact. Maybe it tastes better, I don't know. I'm just gonna sift that all in. And then we're gonna get into what cost the most. Not in terms of like, how much different it was than the cheaper version, but just in general, what was the most expensive? You guessed it, it's the chocolate. All right, there we go, beautiful. So I ended up getting just like really expensive um, cho chocolate chips here. It says here it is 52% uh, cocoa minimum and pure cocoa butter. So that is what's going in, as well as we have some chocolate chunks of <laughs> chocolate from Madagascar. Like really pretty packaging though. And this is milk chocolate from organic Magal's Mag Malagasy. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Malagasy cocoa beans and Icelandic milk. Extra fancy. We couldn't get it all from one place. No, we have to we have to source it from different areas of the world. Just put it all together. It's gonna Fabulous. You can really smell the vanilla in here. Thank you, Francesca. You made some very fancy cookies today. And in case you were curious, this is what the jungle chips look like. They're just little, little mini ones. I need to taste one just to see. That's good chocolate. In they go. And then the Madagascar chocolate. Ooh, ah. Does it taste any different? That is smooth. That is so smooth. And we're also gonna put this in. I am unreasonably excited about this. Look at this. This just feels fancy, as it should. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is $80 of cookie dough. All right, I don't wanna overmix, so that feels good to me. Now I'm going to let both of them rest in the fridge for an hour at least. We'll see what the uh, rest of the afternoon brings us and then we are going to bake them up and Chris and I are going to see Is it actually worth it? All right, these have been in the fridge for now two hours So we are going to scoop them onto the cookie tray obviously using a <laughs> Giant scoop. I don't know how I'm gonna remember which side um, I'm just gonna go in order <laughs> from left to right in terms of when I made them. That just, that's gonna make sense to me. Okay. Do you like two each? They look very similar. I would say that the, um, the fancy ones are mildly more golden in appearance versus the other one. So see if that continues as I bake them. All right, Christopher, are you ready? Heck yeah. I tried to make them very round and like fancy. Did you use that uh, bowl yeah, I did. thing? Yeah, yeah, that is kind of cool. Right? So so. These are interesting. Yeah, I'm not telling you which ones which though. Taste test and see. Okay. Am I allowed to comment on appearance? Yeah. This one looks much prettier. That's fair. It does look prettier. It's more golden. That's the thing. It's got that golden cookie feel to it. I don't know. This one's kind of, I don't know. 
lumpy and weird? You're lumpy and weird. I mean, that's fair too. Don't talk to my cookies. The appearance-wise, that's got the classic cookie look. It does. Yeah. It is 100%. I have not tasted these, so I have, I have no idea. So, which one are we going to try first? Uh, let's do the expensive one. Christopher. Christopher. Yeah. Christopher, um, do you have a do you have a guess for just from appearance as which one is which? This one looks more like a classic cookie, so I'm more prepared to call this just like the standard cookie recipe. This one looks weird, and you used weird ingredients in it. All right, so which one do you want to try first then? Well, this one's closest to me, and that was like a closer cookie. Well, that's honestly very very reasonable. Ooh, ah, it's a chewy chocolate chip cookie. All right. Do they feel different? That one's heavier because that's just a half cookie. This is why. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Can we do that at the same time? You know what? It's a cookie? I feel like we examined it. That was really nice. That was a really good bite. I enjoyed that. Mm. I like the chunks of chocolate in mm -hmm. there. That's a fantastic cookie. I really like that. Mm -hmm. Good level of salt, too. Absolutely. Now let's do a <laughs> lumpy weird one. <laughs> Be rude to the cookie. Quit! <laughs> Unbelievable. Did that one tear it's differently? It's a bit softer, Some if softer. anything. Okay. Yeah. The first one, by the way, mm -hmm. had a really nice, uh, slight, crisp crunch to the outside edge, but not too much. Yeah, it was a, it was a good level. I would say that these look thinner than, yep. than this one. That's this fair. one this one does look a lot thicker. Yep. Maybe in the way that they baked. I don't know. Did giant scoops, so. That's a good cookie too. This one's more chocolatey. Or at least my bite. <laughs> like you chocolate. got a lot of chocolate in that bite. I'm not sure I have that much. Okay, let me try this one. I like that it doesn't taste too sweet. Yeah, I know right. that's a weird thing to say. No, the level of salt is really good. Mm -hmm. Try that first one again. These ones are sweeter than these ones though. Oh boy, that first one's good. I want to go back to it. The second one is a really nice cookie. I like that there's something to it that I'm not placing. It's very good, but the first one's a better cookie. And you stick to what you said before? Or do you even change anything? Oof. I want to give you a chance to like, you know. Right, yeah. No, I can't I can't make that call on appearance alone. Yeah. When you came up with the concept, you were like, I should make like a cheap cookie and an expensive one. And I was like, how much difference is there going to be? Do you remember? Yeah, I was like, yeah. It, one's going to be like, I don't know, like 25% more expensive. How expensive can you make a cookie? Very expensive as it turns out. Anyway, that aside, while well, I stall for time, this one is flatter. It... Just in terms of the flavor profile, it's more one note. It's kind of just sweet. Okay. Like it's it's a good cookie, but this is a really, really good cookie. Okay. So I'm going to say this one has the high end ingredients. Okay. So you want to change your vote. I'm changing my vote. Okay. So this one is expensive. This one is the cheaper option. And, yep. and this one is your favorite. Yes. You are right. Bada boom. <laughs> it has a lot of really expensive ingredients in there. It now, better be really good. <laughs> considering how much we paid now, for this. Now, is it worth it? That That is a, a whole other yes, question. Exactly. This is this is another question. Or which elements are worth it? Oh, good question. So I one. didn't notice a big difference in the chocolate, I don't think, but it is such a large percentage of the mass of the cookie. I feel like it has to be playing a big role. Mm -hmm. Better have some more. For science. So I feel like the chocolate in this one lends a richer note, and this one feels very sh like syrupy sweet. This one I taste chocolate. Mm -hmm. This one is like chocolate Corn with like lots of stuff in it. Wait. You know, like it's not as as um, deep of a flavor. It's kind of what I'm thinking. So I do like the chocolate in here. I don't think you necessarily need to splurge on Madagascar $60 chocolate. Sixty dollars worth. Chocolate. Icelandic milk in it. <laughs> this is very important. But I think that upping the uh, cacao or whatever um, percentage and, and getting like a better quality chocolate um, within your price point, I think that would make a big difference in, in your end result cookie. So I'm wondering about the vanilla mm -hmm. because that. I was very proud of myself. For Did having... you scrape that? I scraped uh, it. Yeah, I've yeah. never done that before. I left it here. I don't want to smell it. It smells like. It smells incredible. Right? That's really nice. That's really nice. Okay, so what are we going to do with that? Are we going to put, put it, it in, in a bottle of vodka to make more vanilla extract? Or are we going to put it in sugar to make vanilla sugar? Or suggest something else. Yeah, I don't I don't know what to do here. Wow, that's good. Yeah. Okay. So anyway. So that has to be making a big difference. And the butter, the butter smelled fresh. It doesn't taste different, I would say. It just tastes like a cookie. 
Like it doesn't taste like, oh, this is a weird kind of take on a chocolate chip cookie. No. It just tastes like a cookie, yeah. just in its perfected form. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think the biggest difference between these two cookies, here you can taste all of the notes. You can taste like, the, you can't taste the espresso, but the espresso with the chocolate, with the vanilla, as a cookie. This is just like, here's some sugar and we put some chocolate on top. That is the difference between these two, to me. This I, is I don't so sweet. I feel like that's giving the cheaper cookie enough credit. Like, I still think that's a good cookie. Oh, it's a fantastic cookie. It's not just sugar and, and chocolate to me. Like, this is, this is a really good cookie. But that tells you how good that other cookie is, that it's clearly better. Because this is not a bad cookie, this cheaper one. This is a good cookie. However, I just had a piece that did not have any chocolate in it, and it doesn't even doesn't even come close to this one. <laughs> Which right. is wild because this is like my normal cookie, basically. Yeah. It's not garbage. Please, it's delicious. Please, please, may, please may this not be your normal <laughs> cookie. <laughs> I can't afford it. I need as to it start is. a Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what? It's okay. The kids don't need to go to college. <laughs> And I had them taste test one of the cookies as well. They like the, the cheaper one better. The sweeter one. Yeah, the okay. sweeter one, yeah. Thank you, very good coffee. Like, you are very welcome. So I think moving forward, if I wanna like up my chocolate cookie game, I wanna try again with the, um, the unbleached flour. I'm kind of curious if that made a difference in terms of the texture and consistency. Better chocolate, <laughs> probably not that expensive one though. And then the vanilla and the salt, I think those are kind of the elements I would incorporate again if I was gonna like splurge on a cookie. I don't think I would do a vanilla bean every single time though. But I did not know where this video was gonna go. I didn't know if I would just end up liking the cheaper one more because I was used to it or if the ingredients would really make a difference because they're the exact same recipe. So this is interesting. I had a lot of fun doing this. So thank you for coming with me on this journey into taste testing. And if you have any recommendations on other ones we could do, if you want to see this as a series, make sure you give it a thumbs up and check out these videos on the side in case you have missed any. Thank you so much for hanging out and I will see you guys all next week.